I am 1000% sure you will be very surprised when you see how narcissists behave when there's no contact. Hey there, welcome back. I trust all's well with you. Today, we're delving into what unfolds when you cease communication with a narcissist. You've made a wise choice by maintaining distance. Frankly, it's commendable because engaging with such toxic individuals only leads to further anguish. They're relentless in their demands, always expecting more from you while offering little in return. It's an unfair dynamic where your happiness is constantly compromised and your energy is drained. So, cutting ties is the prudent move. Now let's ponder. What happens to them when you sever communication? Do they crumble without you? Do they even notice your absence? It's entirely plausible that they've moved on, forgotten about you altogether. This is precisely what we'll explore in today's discussion. Ceasing communication isn't just about protecting yourself, it's also about curbing the incessant mental gymnastics. Your mind tends to conjure up scenarios, wondering about their thoughts and feelings. But let me tell you, my friends, dwelling on these questions achieves little. Instead, let's delve into the psyche of the narcissist and unravel the mysteries behind their reactions, or lack thereof, when you choose to step away. All right, let's dive into the psyche of the narcissist. These individuals bear deep wounds from childhood abandonment, scars that run deep, my friends. These early experiences shape their behavior in profound ways. Their fear of being left behind again is so intense that it dictates their every action. Picture this. As children, they were left alone, neglected or abandoned. To shield themselves from experiencing this pain again, they adopt defensive mechanisms. They'll go to extreme lengths to ensure they're never vulnerable or reliant on anyone else. This means they resort to manipulation, deceit, and even infidelity in relationships. Why cheat, do you ask? Well, for them, it's a preemptive strike. They believe that by seeking attention elsewhere, they can safeguard themselves from potential rejection. It's a twisted logic rooted in their deep-seated fear of vulnerability. They're terrified of showing any sign of weakness, convinced it'll only invite further pain and abandonment. Their entire existence revolves around avoiding emotions because they associate them with vulnerability. They spent their lives building walls around their feelings, convinced that being emotionally detached is the only way to protect themselves. It's a coping mechanism they developed early on to shield themselves from the emotional turmoil of their past. In essence, their behavior is a defense mechanism, an armor they've crafted to shield themselves from the pain of their past. It's a survival instinct, albeit a maladaptive one, driven by the trauma they endured in their formative years. So, while their actions may seem incomprehensible to us, they're simply trying to navigate a world that once left them wounded and alone. When you declare no contact, you're seizing control of the situation. Let me tell you, the narcissist won't take kindly to this because they thrive on being in control. It's their modus operandi. By asserting your autonomy and refusing to engage, you're disrupting their carefully constructed narrative. So, what happens when you usurp your boundaries? The narcissist is thrown off balance. They're triggered, searching frantically for ways to regain their sense of control. They may resort to reaching out to old sources of validation, like ex-partners, or turning to social media and dating platforms to fill the void left by your absence. Being ignored cuts deep for them. It wounds their fragile egos and sends them into a tailspin of desperation. That's precisely why maintaining no contact is crucial. They'll try every trick in the book to reel you back in, bombarding you with calls, texts, and pleas for attention. But you have the power to say no. You don't have to entertain their attempts to regain control. 
They can't handle it when you stand firm or usurp your boundaries. It sends them into a frenzy, scrambling to find alternative ways to feed their insatiable egos. They may try to manipulate you into believing they've changed or that they need your help. But make no mistake, it's not about love or genuine remorse. It's a transactional interaction, driven by their relentless need for validation and supply. So, don't be swayed by their empty promises or manipulative tactics. Stay strong in your resolve and continue to prioritize your well-being above all else. Remember, you deserve better than being used as a pawn in their endless game of manipulation and control. Let's face it, the ego's not feeling too hot. It's in a pretty rough spot. And when the ego's hurting, it'll do just about anything to ease the pain. Sometimes that means turning to substances like drugs or alcohol to numb the ache. Other times it manifests in desperate messages pleading for your return or even threats of self-harm. They might try to reel you back in with sweet words one moment and lash out with cruelty the next. It's all a desperate attempt to regain control because in their minds, they're the ones who should be calling the shots. Their ego is fragile, you see. It craves power and certainty, and it feels most secure when it's the one pulling the strings. But here's the thing, you hold the key to their confidence. When they're in control of you, they feel on top of the world. Take that away and suddenly, they're lost at sea, drowning in uncertainty and insecurity. So, when you assert your independence and refuse to be manipulated, it's like pulling the rug out from under them. They're left scrambling to regain their footing, desperate to reclaim the sense of control they so desperately crave. Here's the deal. You've got to steer clear of them, even if they come crawling back to you. Trust me, they're not coming back with flowers and apologies. They're coming back with a score to settle. Oh yes, they're out for revenge because you dared to ignore them for even a second. They'll make you pay dearly for that, mark my words. Their ego's taken a hit, and they're not handling it well. They're seething with anger at the mere thought of not being able to reach out to you. And let me tell you, they're not just sitting idly by. They're probably lurking around the corners of the internet, spying on your every move. If your life's an open book on social media, you better believe they're flipping through the pages, even if it means resorting to sneaky tactics like using fake accounts after you've blocked them. They'll stop at nothing to dig up dirt on you, whether it's by pestering your friends and family for info or finding other devious ways to pry into your life. But let's get one thing straight. They're not doing this out of some sudden realization of their wrongs. Nope, it's pure vindictiveness driving them fueled by the audacity you showed in taking control of the situation. They're livid that you had the gall to stand up to them, and they won't rest until they've made you pay for it. They're not thinking about how their actions might dredge up old wounds. They're only focused on making you suffer for daring to challenge their authority. So be prepared, my friends, because they'll stop at nothing to exact their revenge. Picture this. They're on the sidelines, ready to pounce at any moment. They'll hurl insults your way, or worse, they might pull some stunt to make your life miserable. That's why you've got to keep your distance, like way far away. Going no contact is your best bet for safety. But if that's not an option due to shared responsibilities like kids or joint assets, you've got to establish some serious boundaries. Keep your emotions under lock and key, when they ask how you're doing, don't spill your guts. Instead of saying, oh, I've been fantastic, just living my best life, keep it simple with a non-committal, I'm fine. And whatever you do, don't inquire about them. That's just asking for trouble, because they'll twist your words and use them against you faster than you can say manipulation. So, remember, keep your guard up, Keep it brief 
and keep your focus on staying one step ahead of their mind games. Listen up, this is crucial. Even if you're forced to interact with them in a professional setting or elsewhere, stay sharp. They're playing mind games, and you've got to stay ahead of the curve. The mere fact that you can't have a proper conversation with them infuriates them. It's all a mind game, and they've pulled this stunt on you countless times before. I get it, you're not trying to outsmart me here, but you've got to be savvy about it, even if that's not the name of the game. These folks don't see eye to eye with you. They're craving your attention, whether it's positive or negative. They're fishing for some acknowledgement because they know they've made an impact on you at some point. They remember the times when you cared about them, and they're eager to reignite that spark. But they fail to grasp that you might be over it now. They think they can keep pushing, because if you give them an inch, they'll take a mile. But you can put your foot down. I truly hope this message resonates with you. You've got to stand your ground and reject their advances. Be the one who stays strong and refuses to engage. It works wonders and clears your mind of their toxic influence. This process helps you gain clarity, enabling you to confront and process your experiences and mental struggles, flushing out the toxic adrenaline and cortisol. It's crucial to grasp that this individual will never undergo a miraculous transformation. They won't morph into a different person just because you've cut off communication for a while, tempting you to entertain thoughts like, maybe I'll reach out to them later. But resist that urge. If you've chosen to distance yourself, stick to it. I understand it might not click immediately, but don't give up. Keep pushing forward. Strengthen your resolve and embrace the power of no, firmly declaring, enough is enough. They won't like it. They can't handle it. They may attempt to reconnect, but you must stand firm and assert. That's the end of it. I'm moving on. Individuals who exhibit such behavior don't deserve a place in my life. I'm committed to healing and growth. It's been a pleasure having you here. Until the next episode, take care. Thank you. Greetings, wonderful souls, and welcome back to our realm of enlightenment. Have you ever found yourself engulfed in the maelstrom of negativity, courtesy of the challenging individuals in your orbit? Fear not, for today, we embark on a journey into the annals of ancient wisdom, unveiling a secret arsenal wielded by the Stoics to withstand the tempest of chaos and emotional upheaval. Picture donning a metaphysical suit of armour, impervious to the onslaught of negativity hurled your way by external forces. This isn't merely a relic of bygone eras. It's a pragmatic approach capable of reshaping your reality here and now. Whether contending with an obstinate superior, an exasperating relative, or any energy-draining entity, Stoic philosophy furnishes a potent remedy. In this illuminating discourse, we shall delve into the practical application of Stoic tenets, not merely for survival, but for flourishing amidst adversity. It's a quest for tranquility amidst life's tumult, a journey towards fortitude, inner peace, and boundless personal liberation. So, if serenity amidst life's chaos is your pursuit, rest assured, you're in the right sanctuary. Let us traverse this path together, armed with the timeless wisdom of the Stoics, and unravel the enigma of maintaining equanimity amidst life's vicissitudes. And remember, should you find solace in our offerings, do bestow upon it the emblem of approval Subscribe to our sanctuary for a plethora of enlightening revelations, share it with fellow seekers of serenity, and grace us with your insights in the comments below. Your patronage fuels our voyage of enlightenment. Now let us commence, undeterred by distraction, for your presence here is no mere coincidence. It is a testament to your quest for enlightenment. Here's the essence guarding our inner peace by establishing boundaries, particularly when dealing with narcissists. Marcus Aurelius once imparted, 
You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. These words resonate deeply in the realm of narcissistic encounters, reminding us that while we can't dictate their actions, we can manage our reactions. In navigating narcissistic dynamics, our locus of control lies in our responses, emotions, and mental space allocation. It's a daunting task, especially when emotions run high and the narcissist holds significant sway in our lives, be it as a family member, partner, or colleague. Seneca offers further insight with, We suffer more often in imagination than in reality. Much of our anguish with narcissists stems from fretting over hypothetical scenarios. Seneca urges us to tether ourselves to the present, focusing on actual circumstances rather than spinning tales of doom. Consider it akin to carrying a backpack. Each hurtful act or manipulative manoeuvre by the narcissist adds weight to our burden. It becomes burdensome, draining, and impedes our progress. Stoicism illuminates a path to unburdening ourselves. While we can't alter the narcissist's behaviour, we wield authority over how we allow their actions to impact us. Diminishing their prominence commences with a conscious choice to redirect our attention. It entails proactively engaging in activities that uplift and soothe our spirits, fostering joy and tranquility. Establishing emotional and physical boundaries becomes imperative for self-preservation. This may entail curtailing interactions, modifying communication strategies to neutralize their influence, or severing ties altogether. Navigating this journey can be an emotional roller coaster. Stoicism doesn't advocate for suppressing our feelings, rather, it encourages acknowledging and comprehending them before making rational choices. When contending with a narcissistic family member, such as a parent or sibling, it's not merely a battle against their difficult nature. It's mourning the loss of the nurturing, a furring bond one deserves. It's akin to mourning a loss and seeking solace, be it through therapy, creative pursuits like writing or art, or supportive relationships, is perfectly acceptable. These strides aren't solely about evading negativity, they're about restoration and evolution. Embracing Stoicism enables us to centre our focus on our inner tranquility, often termed our inner citadel. Reducing the narcissist's influence in our lives isn't an act of cruelty. It's a declaration to prioritise our mental well-being. It signifies that our peace of mind takes precedence, and we refuse to let anyone disrupt it. It's crucial to remember that it's normal to feel wounded, to grieve, and to seek assistance. What's paramount is that you're taking strides towards a healthier, happier existence. With a fortified inner calm impervious to external chaos, employing stoicism in navigating narcissistic relationships entails drawing strength from serenity and concentrating on what truly counts, your peace, your joy, and your advancement. Narcissists often project an aura of superiority, be it through charm, intellect, or achievements. This facade isn't just a facade. It's a significant aspect of their persona, shielding them from confronting their own vulnerabilities and insecurities. As we begin to unravel the facade and probe deeper, we're not aiming to be hostile. We're striving for authenticity, peeling back the layers of illusion to uncover the truth beneath. But how do we embark on this journey? Firstly, we must embrace the stoic principle of focusing on what we can control and what we can't. Our objective isn't to alter the narcissist. That's beyond our influence. Rather, it's to alter our perception of them, diminishing their sway over our emotions and responses. When confronted with the narcissist's self-aggrandizement, instead of engaging in confrontation or attempting to dismantle their claims, one could subtly inquire about the validity of their assertions. Merely posing questions like, 
How do you verify that? Or, could you elaborate further? Prompts them and others to contemplate the veracity of their statements. However, it's imperative to approach this with caution and mindfulness, prioritizing personal safety and well-being. Above all, Stoicism teaches us to eschew conflicts that disrupt our inner tranquility. Instead, we should remain serene and emotionally composed, regardless of external circumstances. This entails discerning when to participate and when to withdraw, always prioritizing our own equilibrium. By maintaining a state of curious detachment, we're not directly challenging the narcissist's self-image. Rather, we're encouraging both them and ourselves to ponder the truth. This gentle probing can gradually deflate their inflated ego, not through contention, but through calmly seeking clarity. As this process unfolds, one may discover that the narcissist's grip weakens, enabling a clearer perspective on both the situation and the individual involved. Embracing this approach aligns with the essence of Stoicism, advocating for mindfulness and self-awareness, wherein we remain attuned to our thoughts, speech, and actions. Through mindfulness, we navigate interactions with narcissists with grace and discernment, staying anchored in our authenticity and pursuit of inner tranquility. Disrupting a narcissist's grandiose self-perception by diminishing their significance in our lives entails a quest for truth infused with gentleness and empathy. It involves gradually unraveling the facade they present, guided by virtues such as sagacity, fortitude, equity, and moderation. In this process, we safeguard not only our own peace of mind, but also offer the narcissist an indirect opportunity for introspection and personal evolution. This voyage of self-awareness and healing demands active engagement, courage, and a readiness to confront uncomfortable truths about ourselves. It eschews confrontation with the narcissist in favor of self-directed growth and well-being. Stoicism, deeply rooted in self-awareness and moral excellence, seamlessly integrates into this therapeutic expedition. It urges us to delve inward comprehending our responses, emotions, and principles. Seneca's insight resonates here. No one has the power to obtain everything they desire, but it lies within their power not to desire what they lack and to utilize wisely what they possess. In therapy, this translates to acknowledging our limitations or anguish as opportunities for learning and development. It entails shifting our focus from seeking external validation to fostering internal affirmation. Therapy provides a nurturing environment for this introspective voyage, facilitating the exploration of our emotions and experiences free from judgment. The aim is to mend from toxic connections, acknowledge our intrinsic value, and grasp that our worth isn't contingent on the approval of a narcissist. Through therapy, we embark on a journey of stoic introspection, scrutinizing our beliefs and decisions with sagacity and fortitude. This introspective journey is pivotal for disentangling from the craving for external validation, granting us the strength to reclaim our autonomy. However, therapy transcends mere detachment. It's also about constructing something new within ourselves. It's about discovering delight, purpose, and serenity on our terms, harmonizing with our core values. This resonates with the ethos of Stoic existence, finding contentment in virtue rather than external circumstances. Partaking in therapy serves as a potent resistance against the negativity of a narcissist. It signifies our assertion that we craft our narratives, not them, this embodies the essence of Stoicism, recognizing that we possess the agency to choose our responses, nurture our inner beings, and live with prudence and rationale. Therapy and self-development necessitate courage, yet they're imbued with optimism. As we peel away layers of anguish and uncertainty, 
we rediscover our vivacious selves. Stoicism imparts the wisdom that true liberation emanates from within as we dictate our attitudes and responses. This voyage of healing serves as a testament to our resilience and potential for transformation, guiding us towards inner tranquility, exuberance and fulfilment. Thus, let's embrace therapy and personal growth with stoic resolve, cognizant that each stride brings us nearer to an authentic, empowered existence. Stoicism reminds us that while we cannot govern external forces, we wield authority over our internal realm, a profound realization when confronting narcissists who challenge our inner peace. Opting to govern your reactions isn't tantamount to suppressing your emotions. It's about recognizing them and then deliberating on how you wish to act. Sometimes it entails pausing to relax, breathe and ponder before responding. Other times it entails refraining from reacting altogether. The crux lies in understanding that you wield authority over your responses. You aren't subject to the whims of the narcissist's manipulations. You're the master of your own mental domain. This approach necessitates practice and mindfulness. It entails recognizing what triggers you and the patterns that drive your responses. You must commit to observing your thoughts and emotions without immediately acting on them. This is where stoic techniques like journaling or reflective meditation prove invaluable. They enable you to distance yourself, view things through a rational lens, and opt for a response aligned with your principles and your objective of maintaining tranquility. By sidestepping the narcissist's theatrix and remaining composed and detached, you're exemplifying a quintessentially stoic trait, practicing apatheia, which isn't synonymous with emotional detachment, but rather with not allowing external circumstances to disturb your inner equilibrium. You're embodying the stoic ideal of maintaining composure even amidst adversity. This isn't about passivity or evading challenges. It's about seizing control and asserting. I dictate the state of my mind and my serenity. Your antics hold no sway over me unless I permit them to. It's about advocating for yourself, reclaiming your agency and prioritizing your own well-being. By adopting this approach, you not only deflect the negativity of the narcissist, but also cultivate your self-awareness and resilience.